Welcome Songtown, another edition of Club Songtown. We've got two great guests I'm going to bring on tonight, amazing songwriters, good guys. Also with me tonight, I have our co-host, Miss Dana. Hey, hey guys, thanks for joining <laughs> us. Oh, are we going to do that again? Hey, hey. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's just going to be my intro forever now. <laughs> yeah. So Club Songtown, what we... I want to get right to it. I want to introduce these guys, but let me just, if this is your first time you've been here, let me give you the rundown. What we do is we listen to a verse and chorus of a song, and then the guest and I will give our, it's not like we're going to give a critique. Some people call these critiques. We have a little bit different angle on it. What we do is we pretend we're in the writing room with the writers who present the song, and we're going, okay, what can we do? Maybe that second line needs to be a little better. How can we tweak that? And so you'll get like this, like inside the mind of three pro songwriters tonight um, of how they approach rewriting their songs. You know, you're going to see it firsthand. And that to me is why I wanted to do this and start Club Songtown when we started a few months ago is to kind of show you that process because I don't think it's something that can really be taught. I think it's something that you have to see in action. So without further ado, I'm going to bring up my two buddies, Jason Duke and Matt Warren. Um, Jason, you'll know his songs. He's written for Keith Urban, Kelsey Ballerini, uh, Chris Bandy, all kinds of folks. Matt uh, wrote one of my favorite all-time songs for Gary Allen. Um, he's uh, just an amazing career. He's a guy that manages to pour all of his heart and soul into a song or he won't write it, you know, and, and you got to admire that. And he's had success doing it. So without further ado, let's bring him up and let's get to it. Start listening. All right. Woo. There he is, Mr. Tennessee Orange. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. All right. Shall we jump right in? Go for it. All right. So excited for hear you guys' feedback tonight. First up, we have Bar Chords by Marvin Shelton. All right. And here we go. For the longest time. There's been stars in his eyes He wants to write a song For the world to sing along But if that doesn't happen It passes him by That'll be alright he still got neon lights Yeah, when you walk through the swinging doors Look past the dance floor You see him up there on the stage Singing for his supper while you're dancing with your lover He's barely making minimum wage No, he ain't winning any Grammy awards Playing those Yeah. And for those of you that don't know, bar chords are a particular kind of chord on a guitar where you bar a fret with one finger. And he's obviously making the double entendre here of playing in a bar and playing bar chord. So good work. Jason, you hearing anything on this one? I wish the end of the chorus drew out a little longer. That was the only thing I heard. I, I loved everything about it. I loved how the chorus started to pick up. It, it, it was like I was instant. I was once it got to there, I was like, oh, yeah, this is so cool. Um, but I wish on the end it went, very make a minimum wage, you son. And I not, da 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 da. You ain't winning no Grammy Awards, but da 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 da. I'm playing in bar chords. Like that's, yeah. that's, that's the thing I was missing. Um, and not to say that what's there is not right. I just feel like it took me there, and you and you almost got me there, and and then you cut me short. And I was like, wow, I want more, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it kind of uh, felt like it, it went by so quick. Uh -huh. Even if it was... Um, uh -huh. 
you're wow. like stretching that out and wow. and you might even have a different rhyme there and go he ain't winning any uh, like he won't be winning any grammy awards playing those bar chords mm -hmm. and put another rhyme where the grammy awards is mm -hmm. I, you know it just felt like it when it got to the end of the course i didn't feel that payoff yet you know and that that's kind of i think what you were feeling it just kind of rushed right by it you know it just it's like it's like 98 percent. yes <laughs> it's like it's so close <laughs> dun, dun, dun. oh boy broke my camera over here the camera's trying to jump mr off. mr matt what's he hearing on this i you know i i i agree uh, uh, it, it doesn't bother me too too bad that it you know that it mm -hmm. can go longer at the end. But I, I, I think it's all, I mean, you know, it is what it is. It, it, it's, it's like he's telling, I'm hanging on. The, the lyrics are there. I, I understand everything. The only only thing that I could possibly even say is the phrasing was not what I expected. Uh, it, 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 the pocket does, didn't feel, there was something, I'm not sure what it was. Mm -hmm. I'd have to go back and listen, but something didn't feel quite right. But as far as the lyric and what he's wanting to say and, and the structure and all that, uh, I, I think that it, it is cool. I, like I said, my ear just wants to hear something, wants to hear a different, uh, phrasing or something. I'm not sure what, what it is, but I think it's really cool. Was it, were you feeling it needed to swing more in the chorus or what, what part were you? I, I think it was just like where the words went. I'd have to go back and, and re-listen. Um, but I, I wasn't quite sure what it was. Um, uh, it, it, it's not, it, and it's not that it's wrong at, at all. Yeah. Um, it's just like, I, I'm not, I'm not really sure. It's hard to put my finger on it, but I, I like how they, you know, the, Marvin's got the, the story dialed out and um, I'm following it, and, which is always good for me. I'm just trying to read ahead here. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I, Marvin, I think what we're struggling with here is you've written a pretty damn good song, man. Yeah. So yeah. we're, we're like, we're trying to really fine tune it in certain ways. And, you know, it's, it's it's hard to poke a hole in it. I mean, I think you did a great job on it, man. I'll tell you just to sir, just to kind of touch back on Matt's point down here, like where if if I had to really 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 pick at the phrasing, I would pick at the phrasing on the verses. And the reason I would yes. pick at it on the verses is because the rhyme scheme doesn't match up necessarily verse to yeah. verse. Because you do a lot of I I ong ong I I I I in the first verse, and then you switch it up down here. Your afternoon saloon. Uh, guitar in night again, cool, cool, soft rhyme there. Tune the do. So we're back to afternoon saloon, and then we go to unwind time. So yeah. that that rhyme scheme kind of keeps me from locking into a rhythm because I'm not sure necessarily what's coming next, and I don't know how to make my brain f go. Oh, I bet this is what's coming, or or hey, I'm going back to this familiar thing or whatever. So that might be the thing kind of throwing that phrasing from locking in really well. Uh, and I would say probably working back from Matt's comment of that, I would, I think your verses are your chorus is pretty locked mm -hmm. phrasing wise. I would kind of think on how tight that phrasing is and go back and retool the verses. If you're going to go back and work on that and may, maybe yeah. be able to tool them up a little tighter, you know, that, that's a good hey, point, Jason. Because yeah, Thank you, Jason. That's exactly, you, you said what I was thinking. Thank you. Yeah, dude, I'm here to help. <laughs> you know, because we were only listening to the first verse and chorus. But yeah, when you get to that second verse, I find that, man, it's you need to duplicate your rhyme scheme in the second verse most of the time. Unless you're, you're writing a song, you know, today some songs have second verses that just go somewhere completely different. You know, especially in pop music, they'll do that a lot more. Um, but yeah, if you're not going to go that far out, it's in this kind of song and being it, it's a traditional song. You really want to keep that rhyme scheme locked in 
to what you established in the first verse. Yeah, and Clay, I'm so sorry. Just one more thing as I'm kind of noticing, because I, I got down to verse two. I, honestly, like if lines one and three were lines two and four instead, as far as rhyme scheme goes, it would have locked in a lot tighter for me. You could have said anything you wanted to, line one and three, and internal rhymed them however you wanted to, but then gave me that familiar on lines two and four and made them. Yes. That, that would lock in and feel complete to me as opposed to giving me this complete thought and then a rhyme and then a complete thought and then going off to another rhyme to end the ver to round the verse out. Right, so that's, yeah. that's another thing I would think about on that on that rhyme scheme there to just kind of make it feel complete and closed, you know. Awesome. The end. That's good job, All Marvin. Right. Yeah. Pun intended, Marvin has set the bar for tonight. Hi. And you, Dana, Dana, you kicked it off with a big country song tonight. I know. And I think uh, we're going to have a few more of those. So let's get on to uh, Bayou Night by Joe Arsenault. <laughs> Sunlight stabbing through the cypress leaves Spanish moss hanging just a dripping off the trees A 47 pick up by the shore where I saw her And the bobbers hit the water with the farmer's daughter She's a binge talking sweetheart about a thousand words a minute But somehow we decided that the sky's the limit Racing to the cabin, we were slapping at the skeeters Cruising down the hall, don't know which of us was leading Critters tap the rhythm of the zydeco moon Our hearts keeping time, playing in tune As the clock struck tomorrow, I was... Hmm. Yeah, man. I almost wanted to hear a little Cajun, like, um, you know, squeeze box on there or something to, to add that little flavor in of the bayou. Having grown up on the bayou, I can relate to, to a lot of this. Um, just for me, Joe... Um, I love how descriptive you are. I feel like it could use a little bit of making me care about the song a little more somehow mm -hmm. other than just a long list of descriptions about mm -hmm. Bayou living, you know? Um, if you're gonna keep it like this, it's almost like the title should be Bayou Life because um, you're just describing all this stuff about Bayou living kind of. I, I just felt like, you know, more relationship stuff with her or something. I just I just feel like it's it's a little heavy on the description side. And I just felt like I needed some little thing in there to make me care about it more. What would you guys think? Yeah, I, for me, it was the, the same thing with the phrasing again. Like, I like what you said, um, Clay, about... Um, a lot of a lot of lyrics and descriptions i mean for me like i i like it both ways i i like you know i like it as simple as you are so beautiful to me can't you see you're everything i hope for you everything i need if it's delivered properly that's okay for me then i'm also okay with bob dylan just completely telling me a <laughs> hundred ways to serve somebody it's like okay that's the hook gotta serve somebody but then he's just crazy descriptive all the way through i like yeah. that too but this, I again, it's freight. Like, I don't know if that's like because I'm a singer, but like the first thing that that catches my attention is like how it feels, and something again is is um, just different uh, in the phrasing. Uh, something that I my ear doesn't normally embrace so much, but I the same with you that you said, Clay. I agree. Um, and then again, phrasing for me. I hope, I hope I, it, this doesn't prove to me that um, I'm a I'm a, a jackass when it comes to phrasing. <laughs> You're a phrase snob. Yeah, no, I yeah, know what you mean. Um, 
the first line went by fairly smooth for me, but when it got just a dripping off the trees, that was like yeah. uh, like it was stumbling there to me. So I, you know, it, it, to me it would might might have been better sunlight yeah. stabbing through the cypress trees, Spanish moss hanging dripping off the trees. Like it just that just a dripping was too hard to kind of get that out there, you know. And I'm I, I'm 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 usually okay with a soft rhyme, but like skeeters and leading. Uh, was a little if you're going to make that uh if you're going to make that rhyme it needs to maybe be with a different accent or swagger or something yeah because skeeters is such a strong it, it pulls your attention so yeah then to follow it with that it you know it might have been better to end that verse with the skeeters rather because it's so strong and then you yeah. just end it with that weak rhyme of leading um mm -hmm. And one more thing before I pass it over to Jason, I almost thought because there's a lot of rapid pace lyric that maybe if I'm remembering the chorus right, I wish the chorus had been like longer notes in the beginning, like critters tapping, rhythm of the side of cold moon, like just some kind of smooth thing yeah. to offset the ver. You got two long verses of just rapid fire. So yes. At some point, I feel like, okay, now we're going to need some long, um, you know, lines in there to kind of balance that out, some longer notes held. Yeah, uh, that's a that's a great point there. Because, like, even, you know, ain't going down till the sun comes up. And it's just a cloud of fatty, you know, mama doesn't know, even doing no, no, no. It goes really fast, but then half it, they ain't going down till the sun comes up. And it, and it really hits. Yeah. Because it's still a quick lyric. Mm -hmm. But it it almost halves what you hear in the verse, and so that allows right. you to focus on the chorus and say, "Oh, I'm in a chorus." Um, my honestly, my thoughts were: I wish each piece of this verse cut off a line sooner, and I wish that there was some sort of contrast of a pre. I, I almost wonder if line four and eight are 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 the ones that should go away and be rethought and repurposed as a as a pre. And then I would, and mm -hmm. then that would allow you to come back to this one chord that you're coming to on the critters tap the rhythm. If you're not going to do that, um, I still think lines, I still think lines four and eight are too much. They just keep me too long in the same place. Um, and I almost wish that the, the chorus kind of went to a four because you just continue on the one, you yeah. continue on the one you can, and so you continue on the one with the same kind of rapid rhythm going in the lyrics. So nothing contrasts for me and makes me go, Oh, chorus. Heck yeah. Let's sing, you know? Um, so even if you differentiated your chorus, just by going to a new chord, you know, start, start it on the four, go to the five, then the one, you know, like um, I would, I would vary up there, but really for me, the biggest hang up was I, was when you went to line four and line eight. That's where I started to get like, oh, that felt a little weird. I just, yeah. something, I feel like something there needs to change and be repurposed. Hey, Jason, you you nailed the comments um, straight from our chat where they were talking about, Jody and Andrea were talking about going to the four chord in the, the oh. chorus. So. Oh, there's a chat? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, come on. You People were taking watching. their ideas. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> yeah, I, I have, there's no chat. Oh, I guess I got it on private chat. Oh, look at all that. Oh my God. There's a lot of chat. <laughs> I'm going to keep it over here on private. <laughs> the ADHD in me will be like, what? <laughs> yeah. Great comments in the chat, by the way. And we've got 105 people on right now. So awesome. I, I Holy love it. Cow. Let's get another one going. Good job, Joe. All right. First co-write of the night. We got one from Aaron Rosing, Michael James, and Steve Diaz. It's called Hope Heaven Looks Like My Hometown. Hmm. I hope heaven looks like my hometown. All my old friends are running around. Not much to do but slow it down. Friday night Home team always wins that fight Circled up round that bonfire Under KC lights Reliving those good old times When it 
it's my time to go Hope I know every dusty road Every curve, every turn Like I've been there before And when he takes me away I won't cry, I won't complain When I'm heading for higher ground But I hope heaven looks like my hometown I don't know who yeah. was singing. Nice voice. That's good. Uh, I I felt like a couple of things with the melody. I felt like the melody when it hit that chorus, I would have loved to hear it go up a little bit because it's pretty much stays in the verse register, um, and that's okay sometimes. But with every line coming in right before the downbeat, I hope heaven like you're coming in with pickup notes to the downbeat in the verse and the chorus. And then that to me, it just coupled with not going up in the chorus, it's just a lot of sameness. But you really pull me in with that verse. Like the verse really pulled me in. This felt like I needed a little more passion out of that, that chorus melodically. What I wish the chorus did what I wish the chorus did is I wish it drew more parallels of heaven. And I don't feel like it, it, it like almost goes there for me. What I wish it did is I wish it went, you know, I hope those golden roads are dusty. I hope those pearly gates are iron. I hope that, you know, like I hope the, you yeah. know, I, I, I hope, you know, the, the chapel, the chapels of four pew Baptist. I hope, you know, like I would love to get like those hometown things and compare them to those things in heaven. Like, I feel like, I feel like you've got a great, great idea going here. And I feel like if you just took the spade and dug down a little deeper and made that hometown match up to heaven a little closer, yeah. like, I, I feel like you would just be on a hammer of an idea. That's so good. That's such the, a good idea. The end. <laughs> yeah. I, no, I agree. I agree 100 yeah. percent exactly what Clay said and what Jason said. But I also what I want to add of my own is that I am all about art and I'm all about somebody just mm -hmm. being who they are. And so I'm also OK with everything that you did, the vo the melody. I was which is, I was interested, uh, like the person's voice and. I'm okay with the fact that they're just telling their story about their, you know, hope heaven looks like my hometown. Uh, so I'm okay with that. But I also see what Clay and Jason are saying. If you wanted to take it to whatever level, I don't know if that's up or down. Uh, you could those the sh suggestions that they made, but but um, but this is my kind of jam. Like I, you know, I was yeah. in my head driving down a back road in Gallatin. When I was listening to this, so that's how I judge what's good. There's a lot of back roads in Gallatin, too. <laughs> yes, there are. <laughs> Heck yeah, man. Yeah, that's really good. That that feels great. I, yeah, and you know, just to service Matt's comment there. Yeah, exactly. I think it's totally. I think you should 100% keep it authentic to your experience. I think you're exactly right. Um, I just wish I got more of that authenticity. I wish yeah, I, yeah. I, I wish I got more of the nouns and more of the descriptors there of your authenticity there. I wish you could just draw me in a little more, you know. I want to know what's there. Yeah, <laughs> tell me, tell me, show me that hometown, bro. And it doesn't oh. mean, Jason. It doesn't have to be a lot, even if it's just in no. the first couple of uh, sentences. Yeah, yeah. sprinkles, really man, yeah. sprinkles, yeah. sprinkles on an ice cream cone. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right, let's keep it going. We got one from Joe Lictech, and ne never know how to say his last name, and M. Lane. We don't have a first name here, but given that co-writer credit. And this is called That's What I'm Fishing For. Oh, come on. <laughs> I like it. Worms in a cup, zip cold rod. Come on. Ball cap on backwards, 
with my plastic tackle box Sat down beside him on the end of the dock Dropped my line and waited on my barber to bar <laughs> With his calloused hands he tied on his door I said, hey granddad what you fishing for? He said a cup of coffee with the sunrise warming my soul for a deep breath the fresh air I can't get indoors and to rewind all the good times till they're good and warm to keep a few but throw back warm and talk with the good Lord that's what I'm fishing for. Yeah. What'd you think, Matt? Mm. Um, I really, really like it. So mm. any anything I'm saying, I'm just nitpicking at this point. Uh, the bobber to bob, that didn't that didn't kill me. Um, let's see the killing scene. I mean, that's pretty dead gum good. You know, it's, uh, I tell you what it is for me for sure is, is proof that there's a songwriter in there. There's a couple yeah. songwriters that are getting yeah. together that are hashing it out and they're learning and they are dead gum hunting it down. That's what I that's what I hear when I hear this song. I mean, I, like I said, I can't even nitpick. I mean, the bobber to bob, it is what it is. I mean, I've been in that co right? It's like, hey, it's, I'm waiting for my bobber to bob. That's just what it is. Um, but I don't know why. I mean, again, I'm nitpicking. I think this is great. Uh, keep at it. That's what I want to say. Yeah, I've heard some good stuff from Joe in the past. So, man, yeah. What are you hearing, Jason? I I I would the I, I would just want to clean up a couple little things, like because I think hey, what I'm fishing for, I wish all the statements were completely direct. I love that he said a cup of coffee with the sunrise on my face. Mm. Some deep breath of fresh air that I can't get mm. indoors. Or rewind to the times uh that are good and warm, you know. Uh uh a something, something, something in a more, you know, however you want to fix that one, you know, good old talk with God. That's what I'm fishing for. Mm. And, and I would also, also love it because it's like, you're talking a good old talk with God and with you. That's what I'm fishing for. I almost wish you kind of brought it back on to the yes. singer there yes. uh, and have him be like, oh, man, I just, just want to, you know, good, good old talk with God and time with you. That's what I'm fishing for. You know, like I, I wish, I wish it, you already kind of go to this great place and I wish you just tack that hammer one more time. If you could, man, it's, it, that's so man. good. I got, and, and, chilled, look, I, I, I got hair on my arm stood up when you, when you brought the kid back in there, the, like that just brought it home for me. And really quick. I, I want to interject again. Like this is just so nitpicky, but if I was in this co-write, maybe take out plastic, you know, worms in a cup, Zebco rod, ball cap on backwards with my tackle box. Uh, yeah. It it feel there's more space yeah. for me. Yeah. I gotta have that butter for my ears. I gotta feel like I'm, like you know, a lot of times I get when there's tons of lyrics. It's just like, I, you know, but that's just me. Again, I'm I'm the guy. I like to see an extravagant painting with very few words. So. I'd want to take out plastic or, or just, you know, ball cap on backwards, tackle box, with my tackle box. Yeah, the plastic doesn't really do anything. You know, it's it, like it, it's not an important modifier there. Yeah, I know, I know the temptation there is to go for the extra internal, but like, okay, but did it add anything? And it did. It, I, I feel like, Matt, I think you're exactly right. It's like, it's a cool internal and it's a cool another astic, astic thing, but it's like, well, do you need it? You know, because I could throw on sarcastic plastic tackle. I mean, I could put a whole bunch. Yeah, of yeah, 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 yeah. Like, do they add anything? You know, um, yeah. So, yeah, I think I think you're dead on on that. Just one less word makes it ten times more powerful. 
Yeah, I think yeah. you're exactly right. Whew. All right. That's a, that's a good one, yo. It is a good one. <laughs> We're strong tonight, you guys. Okay. I love that title. <laughs> yeah, right? So good. Cool. So next up, we have In My Daydream by Joanna Butler, Megan Smith, and William Crowdis. And they want to know, do you think this could be a pitch for sync, an artist pitch, uh, et cetera? Thoughts? Oh, I would also take the that's off of what I'm fishing for. Sorry. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> Sorry. Boom. All right. <laughs> I thought. That's why Duke gets paid the big money. She, nickels, and, nickels and dimes, bro. <laughs> Hanging them off that recoupable balance, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's In My Daydream. <laughs> You have no sweet clue what your eyes can do Here in my imagination Better keep my cards closer to my chest So you can see the mess you're making If you say out loud we're only friends I don't think my heart could tell Had a good feeling, um, good vocal. I definitely hear that chorus as being something that could be playing as you're grooving along in a, a movie mm -hmm. or something. Um, I, I do think that chorus is is syncable. Um, I'm always a stickler when it comes to today's songs with melody. Um, you know, those other songs we were listening to were kind of throwback, but the more we get into what writers today do i really love to hear with vocal phrases a little more contrast between sections mm -hmm. like when i put it up against a taylor swift or an ed sheeran if if that chorus is coming in before the downbeat um then the section before is not going to do that it's going to come in after the downbeat or it's going to have some longer phrases but that section before the chorus you, the phrases are about the same the it comes in about the same way. And I think when you when you do that, you don't really let the chorus shine. So I would even think about on that one, if you say out loud, like come in after the downbeat, mm -hmm. and then you can shift ahead when you get to the chorus and it's like, oh, here's something really cool and contrasting. Um, but I love so much about it. I just think that tweaking that a little bit in that one section could really help set that chorus up a little better. Um, there were a couple of little things. Uh, uh, I kind of wonder the sweet clue thing kind of throws me off. You had, why, why can't it match can and go, you have no damn clue what your eyes can do here in my imagination. And then that makes a little more like, that sounds a little more conversational than coming out with like sweet clue. I'm like, you have no sweet clue. Or what? I don't know. Really. It doesn't make sense to yeah. me. Um, so that was just one little kind of nitpicky thing. Keep it. Don't keep it. Whatever you want. Um, and I also wish that like the, you're the perfect one for me in my daydream. I almost wish that was up a little more. You're the perfect one for me in my daydream. In my daydream. I wish it kind of gave me a like, Hey, let me point you to this hook a little that gave me a, a more of a melodic moment there. That's one thing I'd probably play with. I don't know if that's what I'd change to, but like I, I would at least play with it for a minute because you, you kind of match a down melody. Da 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 da. You know, you kind of match that thing. So you kind of you kind of kill you kind of kill the height of the chorus there. 
and and yeah. it never really catches a height to me. It doesn't really get me very far from where the verses are. It, it does contrast a little, but just not a ton. So if I've got another opportunity to give it some contrast instead of letting it live down on that verse melody land, I, I might explore it. I don't know if I'd act, I don't know if that's a change I would officially make, but that's one I would definitely explore. Yeah, yeah and that's a, that's an important thing with line direction. So if you know your your perfect one for me, if it's got an upward direction, and then in my daydream, it's got the beginning of the line has an upward direction, then it's like okay, well they're not really contrasting each other. So by starting up higher, like Jason is saying. And coming down, and then make, then when you go down and, and come back up with the the day in my daydream, it would give a little more contrast. I like that idea. I there there's so much I like about this song. Yeah, it, yeah. it's just um, I love that's my phrasing. Uh, my ear, I got that. I like the fewer words. I mm -hmm. like the space. It gives me time to like really get down with my blanket and put it over me and just get caught up in in the feel and the emotion of what's going on uh i just i like it like i think initially the only thing that i can even say is like i wanted to hear like a kick butt recording of this like i know that's probably like a, a, a it's a really good work tape or whatever but like i it was like so cool and i'm trying to think i don't want to compare the vocals but i was trying to just remember there's someone that that reminds me of and it takes me to a place and i i didn't want to do the comparison game but rather the thank you game for taking me to you know wherever um that was back in my mind but i dig this um i think that jason i like that jason and clay usually are going before me because uh they are they have great things to say and they're they're a little they're more knowledgeable some you know different writers are like some are cerebral some are feel and like for me i like what they're saying but i just i mean if you put this out and you had like a killer final vo vocal where the your vocal is just out here in your face i mean i could have just swam in that i mean i think that's really cool um it's really it, it's i think it's totally sync I, I mean i don't know shoot i don't know anything i mean to me that could be a cut it could be radio. It could be, it absolutely could be sync. You just never know. I would be hesitant to put a label on it, honestly, because if I label it, yeah. then that's how people are going to hear it. Like if Damn. I, it, like it. if I'm, if I'm sending in a song to A and R, I don't go, Hey, this is a Gary Allen song because then that's the only way they can hear it. And that's they right. might not listen to it for everybody else on the label. I just, Hey, here's that's a right. great, here's a great song. So why put the, I mean, let somebody else say no, or let somebody else put a label on it. It's not on me to say no, or me to put a label on it, or me to say this is pop or country. Like, who the hell knows? Like, here's a great yeah. song. <laughs> what do <Yeah>. you think? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know? how many how many cuts have we had, guys, where you go, I never saw that coming, where an artist you never thought would sing your song ended up recording your song, so. Or, or, or the opposite, like, um you're like man uh i really i can't believe that person didn't record this <laughs> yeah yeah that's <laughs> yes, right i got i got about five thousand of those <laughs> right <laughs> i like to always say in a round like i wrote this for bob dylan he just hasn't <laughs> cut it yet <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to this next one here. This one's called Sorry Blue by Ellis Griffin, Zach Hennard, Hal Odell, and Greg Wilson. I'm sorry blue, a color like you deserves better. Seems like poets and fools have made up a rule that heartache and you go together. Ooh. You've been done wrong by a million sad songs. We ought to repaint the record. 
Cause when I see you, you're forever July sky. The Cabo Ocean waves that envy the shade of her eyes. Oh, to me, you're the color of the way she left. As bright as the light of the dreams we had. It's cold and it's dark where I'm at. Ain't nothing blue about that. Yeah. Some killer lines in there. Crazy good. Yeah. Really, really good. Really nice lyrics, guys. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's a Zach and Hal have been in Songtown a long time. Great work, guys. Um, like, I mean, I don't. There's not really I, anything I, I I have to say. I mean, that's pretty dadgum strong. I mean, there's like some singer's choice stuff in there. I mean, if I was in this mm -hmm. co-write, I I'm always gonna fight for less words, but that's just me. Um, dang, that's really good. I mean, I love that you uh that you wrote the song to the color blue. It's freaking awesome. That's totally my kind of, like, I love it when people bring these kind of ideas in. I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know on this cause I'm not sure, but sorry, blue. I don't know about that title. Um, I don't know. Maybe, Nothing maybe that's blue it. about that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ooh. I thought that was a great line. Nothing blue about that. Nothing yeah. Blue about that. Yeah. Blue about that. Blue yeah, about blue that about would be that. great. That's yes. a great title. Blue about that. And, but other than that, man, dang, you guys got it going on. Keep at it, boys. One thing I wondered, I didn't feel like the first line of the chorus melodically felt like a chorus when it came in. And I don't know, you might just check and see if you were hitting that same high note in the verse there. You might just explore some options to that just so it really... Because I feel like it's such an emotional song, you could give a little lift emotionally when you hit that top of that chorus that I didn't quite feel. But I love love the lyrics. We're just some great stuff in there. Great stuff. Yes. Man, I am so torn. Um, there's a place where I'm like, I'm like struggling with, is this song just cooler than I can comprehend? <laughs> Um, like, like, and this is, this is the struggle I have as I hear something like this. I go, this is so cool. Where am I, where am I wrong? And I'm probably wrong. Um, it, it, the place it lost me for a second is when it turned in the chorus to go, it's cold and it's dark here where I'm at. Yeah. That lost me. Yes. Yes. I agree. Uh, yeah, I agree. I that agree. lost me uh, because you took this, you took this thing and I'm still also struggling with if the verse is actually the chorus and if it doesn't need it, I'm sorry, blue color, da, 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 da. I sing the fools. I don't know. Rule heartache. You better, uh, da, 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 do. Yeah. We ought to repaint the record. I'm sorry, blue. You know, like I almost wonder if that's not the chorus, hmm. And it's just that this is just me waffling back and forth on like, again, like I, this is too cool for me to comprehend almost like I would have to sit with it for an hour and just stare at it. <laughs> but yeah, that, that, but that, that that's the thing, man. But where it lost me is it's cold and it's dark where I'm at. Ain't nothing. Yeah. Blue about and even that. that line. Yeah. Even that line. I mean, I think, yeah, that's where, it, that's where it, I, because it went positive in the chorus and that was so cool to me it was like yes. oh look what they have done they have done the positive yes. turn there it is and yeah. and then and he left me on those two lines I was like oh yes. damn where'd it go yeah uh, so I would I, that's maybe if it were me that's where I would be poking right there is on those last two lines of, of what you have as your chorus I don't, you know, you, you know, I, I, I know what you mean. Like, you know, blue to me, Ooh. you're the color, the way she laughed as bright as the light of the dreams we had. It's, it's cold and dark where I'm at. You're trying to say she's not there. And yeah, you know, 
ain't nothing blue about that because blue is good to you. Like we get that, but right. I see what you're saying, Jason. It, it, it is. Um, it's like you, it is. You, you took it. You t- you took. You already did that in that verse. You said, "Hey, here's all the sad things that blue is associated with," and then you said, "But here's these great memories." I just wish the it's cold and it's dark where I'm at. Whereas a da 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 hat. It, yeah. Hey, you were the best thing I ever had. And there ain't nothing blue about that. You know, I just wish it stayed positive. That one more line, you know, like, and then it would be like, this would be one of those hammers that I was like, damn, I wish I would have written that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Look at me undo blue ain't your color. Like, you know, <laughs> I would be, <laughs> yeah, it's, but I'm going to say all of that with the caveat of this might just be cooler than I get. <laughs> you know i will say for me the strongest lines of the whole song are it seems like poets and fools have made up a rule that heartache and you go together so so good i could see i could see that 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 top of that verse being a chorus too like it's such a strong I mean, I could hear that being sung over and over and over each time. You know, a color like you deserves better. Seems like poets and fools have made up a rule that heartache and you go together. God. Like, <clears throat> that you could hear over and over, you know. Mm. It, it's, I mean, it gives you chill bumps. It's, that's awesome, guys. I love that. That's so good. That's yeah. fantastic writing. Yeah. God. Awesome. Oh. Oh, yeah, I, I, I didn't know. I, the bar is so high with all these. You know, it's like you, 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 they're 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 so good, and then you have to. I feel like a jack leg because you're having to like judge it because you're like, whoa, this is really good. Okay, you're trying to, you know, you guys are are really impressive writers here on Songtown. Well, Matt, we we should have warned you because these guys have been writing and studying their ass off for the last. You know, some of these guys like Zach and Hal have been in Songtown a while now, at least five or six years, and they've worked their asses off to get this good, you know. And, well, you can tell. And, yeah. You can tell. And and that's what it that's what it takes. Like you can have a ton of talent and if you loaf around mm-hmm. because I I've done that before. I I mean, I have talent, but I mean I've also not applied myself and you know, that you that's not going to work it that work ethic i mean you guys that are starting out man this is great that you're working this hard because it's show it, it's showing yeah. awesome all right moving along to this next one called drinking job by robert romero and someone without a first name barnett is he t- is he talking about a songwriter's life? <laughs> Where do you sign Is that up a round? for a drinking That's job? That's any round, any round that you're playing. <laughs> <laughs> <Any round. laughs> Tired of working in my living room. I'm on Instagram, Skype, and Zoom. Got a pile of bills on my desk. It's driving me into a nervous wreck. I know somewhere there's gotta be more A cubicle with a swinging door I think tonight after my third beer It's time to make a change in my career I think I need a drinking job Less stress and more alcohol An old jukebox down the hall Quitting time would be last call our economics are the talk of the town A George Dicko trickle down Where you don't want to take a day off Yeah, I think I need a drinking job Been touching up my resume <laughs> Yeah, the kind you don't want to take a day off Man, I, I did a you tickle got, trickle. You got that that line in there cut short for me, and, and it's such an easy fix. Our economics are the talk of the town. A little George Dickle trickle down. I, I just put little in front of George Dickle, and that those lines would line up a little better than me. It's and it rhymes. Little, yeah, little like, dickle trickle. 
Yeah, it's like I do this for a living or something. Little George Dickle trickle down. Yeah, little yeah. George Dickle trickle down. Yeah, those little phrases, tweaks like that can make a yeah, big that's, difference. That, that's what it is. Yeah, I know somewhere. There's got to be you know, that that I know somewhere there's got to be more. There's a lot going on there. But like uh, I know somewhere. Or I know somewhere else there's more. Uh, that's not it. But a cubicle with a swinging just, door. Mm-hmm. I not know so there's got to be more. You know. You, I, I know there's got to be this. more. Cubicle, a cubicle with a swinging with door. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Huh. Skype is I, it's sharp. I got a pile of bills on my desk. It's making me a wreck. Maybe again, there I go. Less words. I mean, but that. I mean, it. There was one other thing. Well, that second line. I mean, that first line of that second verse. I know somewhere there's got to be more. It's a lot longer yeah. than the, the other one, so yeah. it kind of sticks yeah. out. Yes. I will say, just looking forward to your second verse too. You got George Dickel trickle down, and then you got Jack Daniel interviews, and and for the whiskey people, like you already put George Dickel in there. I'd I'd find something else, like a little, yeah. ain't touching up the resume, you know. So I, you know, taking shots with my resume, or you know, taking shots, I, uh, taking shot, I, taking shot, you know, first shot lined up today. I, I don't know. I'd find something else to say other than Jack Daniel since you already did the. The name of a liquor thing in there just to kind of spice it up a little bit. You show them to. See it all coming clear, It'll probably be for the other year. Another, like the where you don't want to take a day off, that's a lot of words in there. Mm-hmm. Or economics yeah. are the talk of the town. A little George Dick will trickle down. Where you don't want to think of a thing. Yeah, yep. I think you need a drinking job. I never have to take one day off. Think you need me drinking job. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yep. Oh, and what, what is the thing they say? Uh, uh, I One thing kind of missing in this whole thing I was also thinking is that if you know, do what you love, you never work one day in your life. I kind of wish yeah. some thought of that was in there somewhere maybe or just a thought of that could be somewhere you know who knows that's just that's little i mean just looking this down it's so squared away it's like those are little things i'd be looking for to be like hmm, where can something like this go you know verse two being touching up my my resume jack daniel interviewed me today yeah Uh, yeah, there you go (laughs) yeah Again, again, it's just what my rule of thumb is uh, go back and look at every line and if you and and sweep up every clean up every little word that doesn't need to be there to get your point across that. And that's a Chuck Cannon thing who I just admire to the nth degree. Chuck taught me that years ago. He was like, whatever your line is, make sure go back in there, and sweep it up and then don't use any words you don't have to use because that's when you get to really sing that thing. Then you get to put that feel in it. But if you're just, hey, little buddy, let me give me a sign. I do anything to make him out on my, that's fun. But anybody can do that. Man, when you're doing, when you, you're sweeping it up and giving it a place in there where you can grease it up and put your feeling in it or whatever your thing is. I mean, that's just, that's my opinion, but uh, I mean, this is again. These guys are doing great. They're right. Yeah, but they uh, got to- Matt, Matt, you really are touching on a good thing because a lot of writers aren't singers. And one thing I always try to do when I'm writing a song is write the kind of lines that a singer can sing and can put oh, lyrics yeah. on. And you're yeah. right by leaving the space for them to do that. They can put their own personality in there. They can oh, put their yeah. licks in there. And a and, great singer loves to sing. A great yeah. singer loves to have that space because that's what they're in it for. That's why they got into music was to sing. Yeah. 
Awesome job, Robert. That's, I mean, just killer stuff, you know, and, and right now is a good time for this kind of throwback stuff because there are people mm -hmm. digging this kind of music. So yeah, good job. There's like Cody Johnson Ooh. smash, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Drinking awesome. job. I love that title. Yeah. No so doubt. good. <laughs> God, there's shit a lot It's of right it. back there like I'm going to hire a wino to decorate our house. You know that old song? <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like reminds me of that kind of idea. Next up, we got Mixtape by Andrea Brodeur and Kevin Kirk. All right, Andrea. And I see, I think she's been in the chat here, so yeah. I hope she's still hanging out. <laughs> She wore her auburn hair in a messy braid And her eyes were blue I'd been in love with her since the second grade She didn't have a clue I couldn't tell her face to face And I sure as hell didn't know what to say Asked dad how he charmed mom back in the day And this is what he said I poured my heart out in a mixtape It could have been an old XL Max L or a TDK Right from the FM radio onto a cassette Like I was Romeo and she was Juliet She didn't know that I existed Till that 90 minute Grammy when a soundtrack said what I couldn't say She played it over and over and over and over again And you know how the movie ends I put my heart out in a mixtape I put my heart out in a mixtape Oh yeah Good job, Andrea, of setting up that payoff line at the end of the chorus where you da -da 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 -da, da -da 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 -da. you did those little interval jumps and that like pulled me back in so that I wanted to hear the next line that came after it. I thought that was very clever. Good job. She's been she's been applying what we learned in our melody master class. <laughs> Somebody's cheering. <laughs> Who was that? Jason? I, I think Jason, the, the, is that your head? I think the guys outside my window are like listening. <laughs> <laughs> You've got an audience. Oh, two little spots that I, I wish it went, you know, poured my heart out on a mixtape and I wish it just stuck with the TDK thing because you put it on a specific one. So I wonder if you don't go, you know, you know. Come on. Yeah, you know, six, sixteen somethings on a TDK, right from a right from a yeah. radio on a cassette, like a Romeo, and I was Juliet, blah blah blah. So all that's great. Um, and then you mix the metaphor on the end here. You know how the movie ends. I poured my heart out on a mixtape. Man, I wish it was something musical. Uh, you, you, like, you, you know how that concert ends. I poured my heart out on a mixtape. I, I just wish it stuck with. The music mixtape thing, man. Uh, that's that's the only that's like, and that's so little. That's like me going, <laughs> let me find something to say, you know. I can't that's say something. Perfect. <laughs> I do like the idea of just keeping it TDK because basically you're using a lot of real estate to say the same thing with Max yes. L and TDK, where you could have, you know, pour my heart pour my heart out on my, wore my heart out on my sleeve on a TDK or something. Like you just could have said something else in that yeah. line. Yeah. Every second of both sides of a TDK or something. You yeah, know, like every, yeah you know, exactly. Yeah. I love that. You know, yeah. like it's, 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 you know, filled up both sides of a TDK, you know, just what, whatever, you know. Uh, I like every second though. Cause you know, I, yeah. you were pouring your heart out every second. I like it. Uh-huh. It's so cool. That's it it is it a cool ass song, man. And you know how the bootleg ends. I, I have like, I literally have like. Oh yeah. I still, I still have my tapes. So oh yeah. dude, the bootleg's pretty damn cool. I and love that. Yeah, I have, yeah, I have, I have all these like Grateful Dead bootlegs, and they're all on cassette Great. tapes. So it's like, they're on TDKs. Bootleg, That's awesome. you win. Bootleg, it is. See, I knew Andrea said I learned that in in the melody class, Clay. I I caught that. It's it's really good. Like that thing is like ear candy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got you guys write good together, Andrea and Kevin. 
Kevin's probably one of our original Songtown members, and Andrea has been with us a few years. But I would encourage you two to write more because oh, yeah. this is this is one of the better songs I've heard from you guys. It really is. I think it's special. Yep. Todd says in the chat maybe and hit rewind when it ends mm. for that second. That's an idea song. too. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Good idea, Todd. All right. Well, awesome. we do say we do say play it over and over again, so that uh, would true. kind of be true, the true. same. <laughs> I, that would be the same idea, the rewind. But these are the kind. Of, this is exactly how we work in a co-writing session. We'll yes. throw out whatever comes, and then we'll go, "Yeah, that's cool," and then we'll go, "Oh, but you know, over here we say that," mm -hmm. and that's how we we plow through the line. I mean, you know. know how the song ends. Yeah, yeah. Boot, I'd be right. so just. There it is. Boot or bootleg. Leg. So cool, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Awesome. Good work. All right. Next up, we have Louisiana Blue by Craig Lackey, Emily Ortego, and Jonathan Oliveris. Another blue song. I was going to say. Very and popular another, today. Another Louisiana song because we had the Cajun song earlier. That's right. All right. Love it already. What if Louisiana blue was the only sky I ever knew? What if home of the Vikings was still my home? Try. Probably would have been a teacher Spinning my wheels and my time Passing dreams to the next set of dreamers Instead of chasing mine But sometimes I still wonder What my life would be like if I Sometimes I still get a little losing in the blue. What if losing? Somebody else go first. I I absolutely love to hear someone sing from their gut like from their little spirit and their soul about a particular subject that means something to them and i just closed my eyes and the vocal on this is a type of vocal that i always fall for i've i always fall for like you in my book you better either sing like aretha or celine or like willie and neil young I need character or like just crazy good and anything in between bores me kind of. And if I can feel you, I, I I like it. So like initially that's my first thing to say is I like whoever's singing. Uh, I, I believe you. Yeah. I believe you. Um, you know, again, it a little wordy. But man, you just shave off some, of, just get that weed eater out and trim up a few things. Um, I like it, and I like where you're going. And this is our, this is like this is like the exciting time of like a songwriter's life when you're writing stuff like this. Like this reminds me of like the first songs that I ever wrote, um, where you're just like, all right, let me just throw this on here. Um, I mean, I like it. I know the guys are gonna ha are gonna be able to to give you some more feedback, but man, I just kind of like what's what's happening. Um, trim up some lyric. I knew I knew you were gonna say, Matt, the line. I probably would have been a teacher, spinning my wheels in time. Like that. Yeah. The and my was just a little too wordy there. It, yes. You. 
But you know, I th- I find sometimes when you're when you're younger and writing, the wordy thing is something that happens a lot when you're younger. And I think you yes. learn to you have to learn to trim down the words um, because. If you can say the same thing in fewer words, especially on a song like this, Emily, I'm assuming Emily's singing, um, it will cut to the heart deeper with yes. less saying the same thing with fewer words on a song like this where there's lots of space. That space will will really allow people to feel it, I think, a little deeper. One of my favorite examples is I, the Bonnie Raitt version of "I Can't Make You Love Me." I mean, oh, yeah. that's something you would literally like look that. at. So, you would literally look at somebody and go, "I can't make you love me if you don't." Yeah. And when you draw it out with the pen, <laughs> I can't make you love me if you don't. I mean, there's just yeah. power in that few for, few words. With a beautiful, long-drawn melody. That's what I always am drawn to, it's, as opposed to all these descriptive words. But the but the minute I say that, the minute I'll hear the times they are changing and go, that's genius. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> I like it. I like where you guys are going. Um, I had a couple small little things. Um, I had to look up. I'm having to look up Home of, Home of the Vikings. Um, and that doesn't mean that that shouldn't be there. Maybe I I might be the only person who doesn't know what that is and totally fine with that. But I was wondering if it couldn't be something more people would recognize from New Orleans. Like it, it just going for that universal audience, you know, if you went, what if the home of the saints was still my home tried and true, like more people would catch that than Vikings. So that would be like one little thing I would look at. And again, totally saying that with like, I again, I, I just might not be that cool. Um, and then the the other thing th- that's missing, just overall for me in this, is uh, wouldn't change what I was born to do. But then I never found out what you were born to do anywhere, and that was that. Did I miss that somewhere? Um, I was just yeah. kind of looking it back through real quick. I, I wish there was something somewhere that that at least hinted at what it is you're doing now or where you are, or what you're doing, or I, I just wish that was somewhere, even if it was just a line or a half a line that at least made me catch up to your story and why you left. Um, that would be the other little tiny thing I would be looking for. Um, that's really it. I love the feel on it. The feel on it's so cool. I mean, you had me as soon as you started playing. So like, <laughs> What if football town was still my home, tried and true, or yeah, you know, or something like I don't know what it would be. Uh huh. I am with you, Jason, on the Vikings because, um, it it's what I call a speed bump. It's where you I had to stop and try to figure out where another another thing like the Saints or something would have gone by, and you would I wouldn't have it wouldn't have been a speed bump for me. Um, right. Yeah. And you know. I, do you miss like, you know, the instead of I was born to do like took me away from you or something? Do you uh, miss so yeah. it? That that would something like that would be cool. I don't know. That would be cool because that could be cool. talking to a guy. It could be talking to a town like it took me away from you. But sometimes I still get a lo- little Louisiana blue. Yeah, yeah, da 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 da. That took took me from you, because then you go, because then you say something about the X and the next, or you this know, this life I'm living next. took that took me away from you, or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Just there's just something about that. I just I don't know how to make that the thing or how to fix that, but yeah, the, so much good stuff. Feel, yeah. So yeah, it's so cool. And I love any song that has gumbo in it because I grew up in mm. Louisiana gumbo. <laughs> All right. Um, if you guys have questions, are we thinking we're wanting to do a little mini Q and A here in a in a minute? Yeah, yeah, we could do that. Um, let's listen to one more and then let everybody have time to if they got any questions for us. All right. 
So last one of the night here, we have Starting to Fall in Love by Chris Hutton and Sky Knox. Laying on shades just like a goddess Got that sunshine kind of glow Come on Cucumber shades, sipping champagne on ice, got bubbles on my nose. Got a sweet serenity deep inside of me, found a better me, queen of royalty, always had it in me. Oh my god, I just found out I always had it in me. Starting to fall in love, starting to fall in love with me, yeah. Starting to fall in love, starting to fall in love, starting to fall in love with me, yeah. Slipping on my Louis Vuitton's and red yeah. jeans. Oh, I love the, the notes that you end on Sky with and Chris with on the the glow and the nose how you drop down that little half step and add that little cool thing i loved after the first few lines of that chorus where you had that little um it, it was it was vocal but it sounded like a piano chord playing down that was very cool too some really nice kind of vocal stuff on this made me feel good like i could maybe see this definitely like a sync thing in a movie where somebody's starting to feel good again about their life, strutting down the street. What you think, guys? That's where I got the most interested was when it, the the way that, that you answered the hook the last time caught me in a cool way. It just made me like, it. it made me go back on everything you had sung up to uh, you're starting to fall in love, starting to fall in love, starting to fall in love with me. It was like, oh, listen to that. Wrap it all up yeah. in an awesome bow. That's amazing. And it made me went. It made me went back. What? It made me go back and redigest everything I had heard and put it in that perspective. So it hit me with this nice little left hook there at the end. Ha <laughs> I said hook. It hit me with this nice thing on the end that was just like, oh, okay. I get it now. So I love that. I love how you held that off till exactly when you did it. And it, it just, it made me feel so good about everything that had been sung and did it. And it already feels so good. The song feels good. The song feels like you're feeling good about being you. And it's, it matches what you're saying. And I, and I, I love that. Yeah. And I love that little thing you did in the middle of the chorus that, that, but that little oh my god it caught me that was cool <laughs> little production thing it was neat uh the end i'm done <laughs> yeah it's so much cool like melody and arrangement and the musicianship like all, i mean all that is super pimp and um lots of talent there i i it comes across a little cocky to me there in the, I'd give me a diamond ring. I'm starting to fall <laughs> in love with me. Uh, I, I mean, and that kind of stuff totally sells. I, I mean, for me, I, 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 that's a little much as far as like, you know, uh, how good you're feeling. And it may, if it's funny, I think the music seems serious to me. Like, you know, it's like, mm. like if it was more, uh, tongue in cheek, like a ludicrous, you know, you know how he can be funny, you know, saying something like it's like, I'm, I'm this or that, but like, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, there's so much talent. It, it's almost like I could hear Lady Gaga cutting that or like hearing that and go, I want to write with you. Yep. You know, if Lady Gaga or some bad to the bone pop artist heard that, that 
what I feel like when I hear that is like, man, you got, you got skills that I wish I had. Um, there was one line that I thought you could on, on after always had it in me. And then you said, Oh my God, I just found out I always had it in me. If you take that out and just did the always had it in me and then boom, right into that chorus. That's mm-hmm. what I, my ear wanted to hear, but that's just me again. I, I think it's great and it shows a lot of, um, skills and, and, and efforts and hard work. I'm digging it. I, I did wonder about that. I just found out like that made me kind of pause and try to figure out what was going on. So I, I like how you suggested that, you know, I always had it in me. I, I don't think we really need, I just found out, you know, that I had it in me. Yeah. That's a good point. And I like any song that references in the outro, I'm a beautiful mess because <laughs> I, I wrote a song called you. <laughs> of course. <laughs> a little shout out. <laughs> Any questions you got for us, guys? Um, pop it in the chat. You got a chance to pick the brain of some awesome songwriters here tonight. So, Yes. Did you see any questions in the chat? Um, let's see. I oh, I know I was going to tell yet. everybody. Um, we will put it, we'll put a link in the chat and the um, comments below. This is going to post on YouTube. We'll put a link in the comments. This month, it ends tonight because we did it for the whole month of May. If you're not a Songtown member, you can join for one month for $5 and we give that $5 to charity. Just so you can check out Songtown mm-hmm. and we, we raise money. We've um, over the past few years, we've raised over $10,000. And it all goes to charity. So we'll put a link down there. You can check out Songtown. We'd love to have you. Um, as you can see, some of these guys that and girls that have been in Songtown for a while are killing it because we'll help you write better songs. Once your songs are ready, we can help you um, get them to people in the industry. So we do we do it from the ground up. If if the songs need improving, we tell you, you know, and, and that's because as these guys will tell you, Jason and Matt, it really, it, it all hinges on whether you have a great song or not. You know, you're not going to, you're not going to break in as a songwriter if you don't have a great song, you know, it just, it really takes that. I saw Um, a question on there uh, that was, uh, they were asking about what can they do uh, if they don't have, you know, if they live out of Nashville and relationships and, Join Songtown. I mean, we have all of our we have members all over the world that are co-writing on Zoom together. They're in. We have publishing groups where you can work with a publisher each month. Um, just get involved. You know, we'll 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 help coach you. It works. I mean, do they still do they still email songs to random publishing companies and say, hey? That's why they did it back in the day, didn't they, Clay? They no. just walk up on somebody's front <laughs> porch and say, "Hey, I'm Clay." Fly uh, a heli- helicopter into somebody's backyard. And... Yeah. <laughs> My name's no. Clay, and uh, I've got a song. Could you have a few minutes for me to play? No, but we do have a good question here. Um, you mentioned you should write ahead of trends. Where do you see the trends headed for the next couple of three years? Um, did we say that tonight? I can't remember, but I I always feel like um, what we do in the writing rooms a lot of times is ahead of what ends up on radio. Like like what Jason is writing, or, or you know these guys are writing in the writing rooms around Music Row, or if you're in L.A. or New York, it that's where the next level of stuff is happening. So if you're listening to the radio and trying to write that, you're behind, you know? So what I suggest is get involved and try to co-write with people around you and try to find the best writers you can to work with. Um, You know, like Andrea and Kevin found each other, they're writing, writing together with, I think, that's where the, the gold happens is trying to get in the best writing rooms and, and writing your best songs and not trying to guess like, well, radio's doing this now, you know, I mean, you've got to be aware of what radio's doing, but, um, 
you you can't try to aim for where radio is right now because when you throw that ball down the field, you're going to be hitting behind the receiver when the ball gets down the field. What do you what do you think, Jason? Uh, man, I think production is the what people are doing now. I think great song is always the thing that lives. And so yes. if you just concentrate on writing a great song, the production of the day will be the production of the day. Till You Can't's a great right. example of that, right? Because yeah. Till You Can't, if you ever hear Matt Rogers sing Till You Can't, it's it's very slow. It's very heartfelt. It's very – it's not what you heard with Cody Johnston, you know? Yeah. So it was production of the day hit this seven-year-old song – and made it a smash made it a grammy winning song but that's what it needed today to cut through and so that's what they did to it today so write great songs you know I, it's right be great. you like yeah, like yeah. you could chase right like yes. like i mean getting ahead of a trend or whatever who who knows i i, I don't if i did i i I'd, I'd, I'd be ready to retire and i'm nowhere i'm still fighting for my life, I still feel like I'm, you know, trying to make my way uh, into certain rooms and, and whatever. But like the one thing I found after 25 years of doing this is that just be you, because eventually that's who they want to be. They want to be somebody who is, has their own sound and is really cool and unique and or, or whatever. Or it has the ability to just to, to be true to themselves. And you may not get all the cuts, but I mean, man, that authenticity really shows. Yeah, and Jason, you made a great point. I always say it like this. The song is your body. The production are the, the fashion clothes you wear. Mm -hmm. And so you can have a great song, you know, your body, but you can put all kinds of clothes on that body, you know, and, and that changes with time. You know, my body's I'm still going to have a little bit more in the midsection, and that's just me but I can put a lot of different clothes on. So well, if you can really concentrate on writing a killer song in a, with a killer idea, artists get turned on by that. You know, if, if it's something they've never heard, it, it can't be, you know, I love you, baby. It's, it's got to be an idea. And we've heard some of those ideas tonight that were, were really fresh. And that, I think that's, that's what you got to focus on are just these killer ideas that are going to excite a publisher, going to excite an artist. All right. Uh, see another question here. Uh, kind of going along with that. We always hear right up tempo, but it's often the powerful ballad that moves you guys. Any thoughts on that? Yes. Um, yeah, Correct. Uh, get on any record and do the math, um, figure out what's mid tempo, up tempo ballad, you know, because a good, a good old ballad sure does move us, but that that's two out of 10 on a record, you know, so your shots at getting the cut are with making people feel good. Like always keep the live show in mind. You know, unless you're writing for Ray LaMontagne and then you can write the slowest, saddest song ever on the planet because he does 15 of them in a set, you know, like, yeah. but, you know, uh, you know, what's uh, what is it? Um, Marty, Marty's always telling people, you know, that Billy Currington had to pull walk a little straighter daddy out of his set because that's where everybody left. They just you play this really sad, sad song and everybody leaves so i think that's one thing that that we forget a lot of times as songwriters in there writing the best song we can for the day trying to tear out a listener's heart and everything but that at the end of the day it's it radio play drive time and ticket sales you know what's going to put butts in seats and what's going to put butts in seats is things that make people have a good time make people come out and drink all the concessions and buy you know, and buy t-shirts and, you know, so the, you serve yourself better. If you can do the thing that gets into the live show, you know, you have a better shot at a single that way. You have a better shot at getting on the record that way. And that's not to say don't write your heart, and write ballads, but just do the math on releases. I mean, um, aim for where you've got the better shot. <laughs> if, <laughs> you know, if you're going to write that ballad, it better be song of the year. If you're going to get it cut. Sure. You know, because because the artist is going to write their heart out and write a ballad quicker than they're going to write an up-tempo usually. So you've got to beat mm -hmm. out the artist. So if you're trying to just get on a project, 
you know, I have a I have some friends, you know, my buddy Tommy Lee James, he was notorious for writing slow to mid songs and maybe he only had a hit every 4 or 5 years, but it was a great freaking song and he ha he would have a big hit with it and he was okay with that. So, I think you just have to 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 pick and choose and you know, don't feel bad if you're writing all ballads and you're not getting a bunch of cuts. Um, you know, just be conscious about what you're doing, intentional about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then we know Matt's going to say, write your freaking heart out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, that's it for me. I mean, Clay knows. <laughs> We've Clay and I have spent enough time around each other. No, I mean that's my that's my trick. I mean I every writer has their thing, and you have to. There's so much talent in this town. It, it you will spin your wheels forever if you try to be the best at what you do. Don't be the best at what you do. Be the only one doing that, and then you yeah. can't be compared. And then you, but that's going to require some heart and some just being you. It's a gamble. And I mean, you know, maybe that's why I don't have more than success than I than I've had. But I mean, I just at the end of the day, man, if I if I have to be anybody other than me, the whole room's gonna know I'm bullshitting, you know. Mm. Uh, so I just try to okay. be me, and ho I hope that I just try to be me, and I and I hope that my goal after I play a song is I want somebody to really believe whatever I just said, whatever I just sang. I hope they believe I did it or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I want to. A drawing a tear is better for me than making somebody dance, and that's why we have different kinds of music. But I mean, I, I Clay knows I, and so does Jason. We've all written together, and I mean, I that's my ace in my bag is that I just pour my heart in, into what I do, and it's 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 been good for me. Mm -hmm. But you pour your heart just, into it, but you have a high level of craft, and I think that right that that has to go hand in hand because you can pour your heart out into a song but if you're not writing it with the right, craft correct. needed then the audience is not feeling what you're feeling you know and and that's the goal so and and i like how the guy that's got all the gold plaques right. on the wall back there says you know if i wasn't like this i would have more success and we're all looking <laughs> at this. <laughs> I mean, I live in a one-bedroom apartment in Nashville, and I don't own nothing but my. That's explorer, the only so. wall you have, right? That you live yeah. in a one-wall apartment. Hey, <laughs> I, I put this up here to constantly remind myself that if I that it it can happen, dreams do come true. That's why they're right. Amen. That's Amen. right. Yeah, I love it. All right. Any other questions before we go? I think we're. We gave a lot out tonight, guys. You you really appreciate Matt and Jason you doing this for everyone. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Club Songtown is come to Absolutely. official close. We're gonna we're gonna do this. Uh, we do this every month. We bring in different writers. Jason's been on a couple of these. Hopefully, we'll have Matt back in the future. And it's it's always a pleasure. Keep the songs coming. We and you know if you didn't get your song played tonight, here's the way I look at it: is I learn more by listening to other people's critiques than I do just getting my own song critique. Sometimes, so we'll get to your song. Keep submitting. Um, eventually, we'll get to to your song. But take the opportunity to listen to what the pros are telling you, Jason and Matt tonight. Um, you know about all the songs we listen to because that's that's what you want to do you want to learn the pro mindset of what are the guys in the writing room that are great writers what are they thinking about oh okay when they get to the second verse this is what they're thinking about you know that's the kind of stuff that i got when i listened you know the the first couple of times i'm sure matt can tell you this and jason the first time we ever got in the room with a killer songwriter <laughs> that just blew us away it kind of the light bulbs go off because you start thinking and you're going like oh i didn't know this was important and all this stuff i thought was important didn't matter like let that stuff go you know and so that's what we're trying to give you guys each month with club song town 
Cool. Awesome. Thanks everyone for tuning in and uh, we'll see you next month. I'll put the link below after this goes um, on replay and you can um, check out the $5 charity month at Songtown. Awesome. All right. Have a great night.